Today on the show, we're going to be taking a look at the vintage Wildstorm Spawn Long Form Trading Cards from the 1990s, so stay tuned. This is Comic Game TV. Today on the show, we're taking a look at the 1995 Wildstorm Spawn Extra Long Trading Cards. These were the first cards of their kind that I ever saw. Uh, I do have the entire 150 cards set here. Uh, very nice. I used to have the majority of them back in the day, but of course, over moving several times, like the rest of my collections, they came up missing or left behind. So I did buy these off of Amazon a couple months ago. Uh, and I decided to wait until the month of October to do a video on them. Since Spawn is kind of a horror character, I felt it fitting to wait until the month of Halloween. So anyway, here we have Spawn. And each one of these cards is actually a scene taken directly from the earlier comics. So here we have Spawn, number one. He remembers a little. A man he hates. A career for the government both proud and shameful. And a woman he loved more than life itself. For the sake of her love, he came back. He struck a deal with Malabolgia, bartering his soul for one more chance. But why was the Lord of Darkness laughing? Now, Al Simmons doesn't know who he was. Now, he is only Spawn. Art by Bill Sankwitz. Pretty nice. These do not fit in normal 3x3 three three pouches for training cards. You actually need a 3x2 uh, card divider. Uh, you can fit 6 cards per page uh, on them. Beware my foes. Number 2. Memories whirl like dead leaves in the cold air. Unwarmed by the frosty blue moon above. In the night, the red and black figure broods. His quest for vengeance is a hunger he must feed. He must know. He will find the man who framed him. The man who murdered him. And they will pay. He has the power and the will to use it. Art by Trev Trevor Scott. Here we have Sam and Twitch. I'll just, I'll let you guys read each one. I'm not gonna go through and read each one. Very nice. I like that scene. Very cool image of Spawn there. In this town. I may kind of go through these a little quickly. So if you want to read the backs, feel free to pause.
I am the violator, girly man. <laughs> I always really like that image too. Uh, the card was probably one of my favorites. Another really nice looking card. Uh, as I said, each one of these cards are scenes taken directly from the comics. I think when I originally bought these back in the 90s, I think I bought them at Kmart. Spawn getting his heart ripped out by the Violator. I know trading cards aren't really worth anything anymore, but they're still cool to collect. I definitely want to reobtain all my old trading cards I had as a kid. I had some uh, Spider-Man trading cards, uh, X-Men, tons of X-Men trading cards. In fact, uh, the X-Men trading cards were the ones I had the majority of. Uh, all the different lines, uh, Jim Lee's X-Men line, 
uh, Flare, Flare Ultra, uh, 91, 92, 93. I do plan on reobtaining all those different lines at some point in the future. Just, you know, not really to ever resell for value or whatever, but simply for the nostalgia. I always loved trading cards and we don't really get trading cards nowadays. Uh, I think they kind of went out of style, I guess. Now you get all those game cards like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon and stuff like that. These... These trading cards were far more fun to collect for me than anything Pokemon or anything like that. This is really how I learned everything, the majority of what I know from co of comics is through trading cards because back then if you went to a comic book shop the guy at Hobby Horse here in town he liked to rip people off royally uh, he, he just really overpriced comics even new comics he really overpriced and it was very disheartening the only place you could really get comics was at like Kroger or the uh, pharmacy or something like that uh, but most stores don't really carry comic books anymore so it's really disappointing Maybe about a quarter of the way through, guys. <laughs> Boys screamed and girls screamed, so I made him scream and scream and scream. Now, when I originally collected these, I did not have all uh, the entire set, but I did have maybe three quarters of the set. So a lot of these I'm actually seeing for the first time. Even though I, just, I did kind of go through them when I bought them, uh, I didn't actually really look at them like I am now.
this image here was also another one of my favorite favorite images on these cards just ooh, the spawn looks extremely epic right there he's ready for battle Todd McFarlane got in a lot of trouble over the creation of this guy. Mob boss Tony Twistelli, named after a hockey player. Another epic image. Destroying Overkill. The Soul Trapper. Reborn, Billy Kincaid finds himself trapped in a ghastly afterlife. To survive, he bands together with a batch of fellow new arrivals. One of them is promptly taken by a Soul Trapper. A mechanistic thing from the sixth sphere, not to exist in glory, but rather to be a pet. This year, it's singers, Lil Jessica explains. Last year it was acrobats. Be on the lookout for these award-winning Todd Toys action figures in stores now and later this year. Spawn action figures, fall 1995, six action figures. Spawn 2, Cosmic Angela, Redeemer, Ninja Spawn, Violator 2, Curse, and Vaporizer. Spring 1995, six action figures, Commando Spawn, Pilot Spawn, Malabolgia, Chapel, Bad Rock, and Angela. Fall 1994, six action figures, Spawn, Medieval Spawn, Violator, Trimmer, Clown and Overkill, two vehicles, Spawn Mobile, Violator, Monster Rig, one playset, Spawn Alley. Then you got the Young Blood action figures and Wet Works action figures.
love how each card has the issue in which the scene comes from. Another very epic image, medieval spawn. Really like this card. And yes, for those of you who don't know, that is Marvel Comics Angela. Uh, she actually debuted in Spawn. It was Spawn number nine during the medieval Spawn story arc. Created by Chuck Gibson, I believe. Um, he and Todd had a kind of a falling out. Uh, Todd tried to claim that he owned the rights to Angela, even though Image had a thing where creators owned their own work. And Angela was eventually sold to Marvel Comics, where she became the sister of Thor. Yeah, Todd McFarlane was kind of a dick about it, too, uh, about Angela. Because he claimed that because she was a part of Spawn comics, that he owned her rights. Um, but Chuck had it in his contract. And in all Image comics, uh, creative contracts, that they owned their own creations. Because that's why Image comics was created in the first place um, so anytime Angela appeared in comics Chuck didn't receive any royalties from it uh, he never even received the royalties from the action figures or anything so uh, when he confronted Todd about it Todd told him that he would get compensated but then turn around and send him a letter or something saying that, you know, since Angela is part of Spawn Comics that he owns the rights to Angela. And so there was this huge, huge legal battle which Chuck eventually won. Which is why in the collected editions uh, Spawn number 9 is not included.
starting to get a little bit tired, guys. <laughs> this is taking a little bit longer than I thought. I really like the artwork on these cards. They picked some really nice scenes to showcase. Didn't realize there was a double in there. Oh, 
Oh, that's why. Missing card number 111. Hmm. Well, it's a little late to uh, contact the uh, seller now. It's, uh, it's kind of disappointing. I thought I had a full set, a complete set, but uh, and I just uh, just went through my eBay and Amazon. I can't remember which account I bought it off of. I think it might be on my other account on eBay. I have to bring it up. Um, this takes place right after Frank Miller's Batman Spawn uh, graphic. Um, they li they liked the shoelace face look, so they they incorporated it into Spawn's standard timeline. Uh, the Batman Spawn comic takes place in the Miller verse not in the regular spawn universe so what they did is they made it to where this happened to him because of houdini from the last year.
so there you have it guys the 1995 Wildstorm spawn trading cards just to show you the size difference between these spawn trading cards and a normal trading card here's a normal trading card compared to Wildstorm Spawn. Quite a difference. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a happy Oct October and a safe Halloween. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care. Quick update guys. I sent a message to the eBay seller uh, regarding the spawn cards and the missing card and he did send me one number 111 I had doubles of number 110 so he did send me the number 111 uh, but just to show you guys let me go ahead and uh, I purchased it off of or from M hop on hop on eBay uh, very good customer service uh, very pleased uh, that even though I purchased this set back in June uh, he was still willing to send me the uh, number 111 since I had a duplicate of number 110 and what's cool is he sent it in this little plastic case so. hey guys if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture also you can check out one of these two playlists right here on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched